This is Twit. Um, so let's talk a little bit, bit about the teardowns. When did they start? We started, yeah, so there was a, um, a Japanese website called the Kadawara San. And it, it's run by uh, this guy, Mitsunobu Tanaka, who is a, uh, he's actually a researcher at the Red Cross in Japan. And he's just an Apple fanboy and always has been. And he would buy the latest gadgets and take them apart and put them online. And everybody would cover it and everybody would be trying to interpret his Japanese. And this was back when Google Translate wasn't as good. And so it was kind of this mystery, like, what is he saying? But he's got these amazing pictures inside the new, new gizmos. Uh, and so we started kind of following up and doing the same thing. And so it was a little bit of a race between him and us to say, hey, there's a new MacBook. Who can get it apart and online first? Uh, and I, I struck up a friendship with him. We started emailing back and forth. At some point, he said, look, I'm just doing this for fun because I want to see what's inside these things. If you guys are going to do it anyway, I'll just I'll just pass the baton to you and you guys do the teardowns and I'll write about I'll write about what you're doing in Japanese. And so uh, since we kind of struck up that friendship, we've both been doing it ever since. And it, I, I rec check out his site. He has great Matt content. Um, it's all in Japanese. <laughs> okay. Um, and so what, what, how do the teardowns uh do you do you do them basically to prove whether something is repairable or not so repairable? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at first it just started out we were curious. We knew we were going to write a repair manual for it anyway, so let's get an early start on the repair manual. And then we realized that it was an opportunity to have a discussion um, at the time the product was coming out when people had a chance to decide whether they want to buy it or not. Can we recommend this product or not? Uh, and and there's lots of people. You do a great job. The tech world does a great job of reviewing products, but nobody was talking about how easy or hard it would be to fix. And part of that is because you don't know unless you take it apart. So like it is absolutely impossible for me to give you a recommendation or a repair score on the product until we've disassembled it. We just don't know. Uh, and so every time we open something up, it's a surprise. And and so with this with this guy, it was interesting because there's these new adhesive tabs on the battery that we. Uh, had only ever seen in one other iPad, and they did it in kind of a different way. And so you can see these the the adhesive that we're pulling out in that step, it stretches and releases. And so we've been begging Apple to put this adhesive in these batteries for a long time. It seems like finally they're listening to us, and we got really excited. We pulled it all out, and then the battery still didn't come out. Um, and and I think I'm not sure if if, if you want to switch back over to my camera, um, I'll show you where the pull tabs came out. So there were pull tabs on this side here and then there were pull tabs here but this section here had regular adhesive underneath it and so you can kind of see the the wrinkle pattern but we, it, we were able to release the adhesive everywhere else except underneath here and then we had to like aggressively pry and almost damage it so it's like apple got almost there on making it easier to replace the battery and then stopped for some reason <laughs> and so does uh, can you put that back together? Will you put that back together? Yeah, yeah, we can and we will. Uh, we didn't damage this in the part. We've gotten pretty good at opening iPads. Um, we haven't, like w with the new Microsoft Surfaces, we pretty consistently break those when we open them. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we broke this one at all. And does that have as much glue in it as, a, as the new iPhones do? Uh, it's got more. Um, the iPhones are actually pretty good. Uh, so on on our repair scores, we always rate the iPhones. The iPhones are actually some maybe the highest rated like mass market smartphone out there in terms of our repairability scores. Where these these devices are are pretty pretty low. Um, this is better than past iPads, kind of in in the respect of the the battery. But there's still, I mean, there's there's adhesive all the way around um, the inside. Uh, and and one kind of challenge is that the adhesive is relatively thin, so you got to get in and slice the adhesive as you go around, um, but uh, not go so far in that you damage the the display. Uh, and part of the way it's it's helpful to have a repair manual is to know where the cables are, where the little you know cameras and things that you can you can impact. Mm -hmm. Like there's this little component here. And so I thought there was more adhesive because in the phones because they were waterproof. Is that not true? Yeah, well, yeah, but the, they use a kind of adhesive gasket, um, but it's it's easy to remove. So I guess the difference would be it's it's this very thin, small, like you can just use a suction cup and remove it. You don't need the like heating and prying and um, uh, process that we have with the iPads. I think they have more problems with structural rigidity on the iPads, and so they have to use, I think, more glue. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, it, you know, if you say, well, why why did Apple use the, the pull tab adhesive everywhere except right here? I have a feeling they got close to the end of the design. That was the plan, and they realized they were not getting enough um, rigidity. 
it's interesting to note that they only they only did that that uh, uh, adhesive on the side that has um, is this the SIM card slot? Uh, I don't know. I I don't know it's what is it a speaker? Uh, the microphone is over on the other side. Um, I think it I, might be the speaker. Uh, the speakers are all uh, around the corners. Anyway, you got this big opening on the side of it, and that opening creates. Uh, if I if I kind of flex it here, you'll see there's a fair amount of flex in the frame. Mm -hmm. And so I'm guessing that they they needed additional glue to use the the battery as part of the structural rigidity for it. Uh, and we see this a lot. Apple is so aggressive at going thin that uh, that there are trade offs, and and the ability to like fold the iPad in half is a is a serious concern. Um, as Zach over at Jerry Rig Everything found out. Uh, and so I think maybe this is a attempt to reinforce it. They were hoping they could use, I would guess they were hoping they could use the easy to remove pull tabs and then uh, ran into problems.